I'm um, going to be collecting potassium carbonate from wood ash. It's a procedure I've been wanting to do for some time. So I thought I'd better get around to actually filming it so I can put it up on the channel and perhaps we can um, yeah, reveal how the process is undertaken. So the first thing you're going to want is just an old bin, plastic preferably. I've used tin cans in the past and of course we're working with potassium carbonate which is an alkali. Uh, so it will actually eat it, dissolve it, rust it and create holes in it. So I've decided to go with a plastic bin this time. Um, and hopefully it has the purpose. All I've done is I've just drilled a hole in the bottom of it and you want to be able to fit this flange in there and basically you have two washers on either side of it, two rubber washers. And use the rubber washers to seal the flange up and then we attach our tap to the flange from underneath and you have a collection vessel um, and then we can go into the layering process. Now this is the flange once it's been installed. Pretty basic. Just so that give you a look at it. It's the bin. It's the inside tap. And that's where the tap will go on the outside. On the outside of my veggie garden, we've just got a wooden table with a hole cut in it. And then you slide the flange along, which protrudes it out the bottom of the table. It's here that we'll be able to connect the tap to it. As you can see here, I've got the tap installed. I've had to turn it sideways purely because it won't fit underneath the table exactly as the last one did. But it should still function as a normal tap should. And down inside here, I'm going to use a pan, a pot plant pan, just drilled some holes in it. And that's going to protect the protect the flange so it doesn't get blocked up. Just drop that down the side, which is good to go. The next step is to get river rock. That's what you want. Decent sized stone. I'm going to use about a quarter of a bucket, third of a bucket, and just tip them straight in on top of the green protection cover. I've gone ahead and I've got the stone in there now. You can see the green cover that was underneath. It's protecting the flange. It's been totally covered up. Next step is to put hay on top of the river stone. And you're going to want to put a couple of bricks on top of that to stop the hay from floating up when you fill it up full of water. I've come across a few rocks that I'm going to put on top instead of some bricks and then a piece of broken brick as well. Should be enough just to hold the majority of it down as we fill it up full of the water. And I'm going to be collecting the wood ash from the fire drum. Simple as shuffling that into a container, taking it down the back and processing it. Now that all the wood ash and charcoal from the fire that I use for cooking has been collected, we can actually go ahead and sieve it using a screen. And that will remove the charcoal pieces and leave the ash at the bottom of that container there. And left with his charcoal, which can be used in a furnace. That's another point to be crushed, to be put into the garden as biochar. It's good for the veggie garden. And then what we're left with is a mountain of fine ash. This is the good stuff. Potassium carbonate, calcium carbonate, the silicon. The silicon is more of a byproduct. The potassium carbonate we're hoping to capture from it. Just 
tip the ash and straight on top of the hay. I'll try not to smother yourself while you do it. You might actually be right just to add water to it. A bit of luck. The hay doesn't come to the surface this time. Hopefully the bricks and that hold it down. That's what happened last time, one of my failures. So far so good. As you do you want to make sure that nothing's leaking as well. This is common sense. So far, so good. As you're doing it, you can actually see it cleaning the edge of the bucket. Good stuff. And that should be heaps. A bit of the charcoal settle into the surface. That can all come out. And now all you need to do is each time you have a fire, go through the process of screening out the ash and you just add the ash directly on top of the water, stir it through. Potassium carbonate will dissolve into the water and then you can collect it. And the longer you leave it and the more wood ash you put to it, the higher the concentration of potassium carbonate will be. And yeah, you can use potassium carbonate, mix it with calcium hydroxide from limestone and you get yourself potassium hydroxide and you can use potassium hydroxide to extract ammonium nitrates from bat guano and you'll get potassium nitrate and you can use charcoal from the wood with potassium nitrate and some sulfur and you've got the makings of gunpowder or you can use potassium hydroxide to make soap, which is what I'll be using it for. So we're almost done. The water's all in. Let it sit for a bit. You want to leave it to sit for at least a week before you go and process it. And the water doesn't actually feel soapy. Normally you can dip your fingers into it and you'll feel a texture to it, a real slippery texture to it and it doesn't feel as though there's much potassium in this so I'm going to have to add more water ash over time but eventually all you do is you come down to here and you want to just turn that tap on there of course and collect what you should get as a clear potassium carbonate solution. Now as a test just to see if it can actually work, to see if the tap's going to function, see if I can run some out into this bucket here. It should be easy, it should be, but then things have failed many times before. And there we go. We've got a trickle, which is exactly what I was expecting to get from it. I slightly feel a slippery texture to it. It should be, become more viscous. Definitely between your hands. You can see how pink my fingers go when you're using it. You can actually use the solution straight up as a soap. In medieval times, that's exactly what they used to do. See how pink your fingers go. Now what I'm hoping to do in the future is not only make soaps out of this, and using this process, or make gunpowder, which is something I've always wanted to attempt and I have in the past. Um, but never with any real success. 
Um, I'd like to try and make fertilizers for my veggie garden. And I've been thinking about extracting each component separately. So taking the potassium carbonate from the wood ash, uh, collecting calcium oxide from limestone, perhaps uh, burning bone and collecting the phosphorus from the bone um, and doing different combinations of mixtures to see if I can get different results on plants. And it shouldn't be impossible, you should get really good results out of it. Now, of course, that's probably gonna happen at some other stage. <laughs> it's gonna take a few weeks to actually process this. Um, with a bit of luck, we um, can have a few more fires, cook a bit more food, um, process the ashes, collect a bit more potassium carbonate. Um, and then I can put some of the potassium carbonate aside purely for the um, process of making different fertilizers. Um, I'll make different garden beds and each one will be a different test subject and each test subject will have different combinations of fertilizer added to it. Uh, it'd be really interesting if I can you know, try and keep the controls the same, so the same sunlight, same amount of watering, uh, etc. It should be a really interesting experiment. And also, if you enjoyed the video, um, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe. I do enjoy making these, although I'm in the middle of town, so it's a bit awkward to speak too loudly and that. But we do our best. Um, yeah, I'd like to be able to make a few more videos as well. Perhaps even go into the cave systems and get that guano and process it as well as a video. Um, go through the whole procedure of making gunpowder from scratch. See if we can get it to happen successfully. Um, extracting sulfur is something that I've always been interested in as well, but um, there's no real easy way that I know of that I found information in regards to it. Um, perhaps trying to learn a bit more chemistry is in call. Cheers.